everyone. It's me, Kirk Maston, here at Maston Labs in beautiful Seattle, Washington. And today we've got a very special episode for you. We're going to be talking about culling your images in Photo Mechanic, what to look for when you're culling a, a wedding in particular, and then how to get all that into uh, Lightroom or Capture One. So uh, it's it's just it's kind of the nuts and bolts of having a fast workflow. If you can save time culling, it's going to add up really, really quickly uh, over the course of your career or even just you know year by year. And it's really worth it to do this part fast and efficiently. So we're going to talk about the philosophy of culling, the things I look for, how to, how to just do it mechanically very quickly, why we use Photo Mechanic to do the initial culling, and then uh, as kind of a bonus, I'm going to go into what you need to sort out of your wedding to get published. So exactly what uh, blogs, wed uh, you know, wedding magazines, etc., what they're looking for to get your event published. Because that's a really big part of marketing, and it's really, you know, it's, it's critical. It's kind of how I had my success as a wedding photographer for most of my career was through publication. <coughs> All right, so let us get started. Um, as with every show that we do, if you have any questions at all, please put them in the comments, and Casey or Kyle will throw them up on the screen, and I'll answer them in real time because I love interacting with our community. It's an amazing place. If you're not already part of our community, head on over to Facebook, type in Mass and Labs Community, join. It's totally worth it. It's a super friendly and educational place. It doesn't even matter if you own any Mass and Labs product. We want you there. We want to help you succeed. And no question is too big or too small. So join us if you're not already there. OK, so you guys ready to get started? Yes? Yes? Thumbs up? All right, let's do it. So let's talk philosophy for a second. I'm going to do a few slides, and then we'll get to the editing. But all of this is really important info, so get your pencils out, get your paper out. So. <coughs> I believe in a philosophy of culling ruthlessly. Culling is the process of deciding which images stay and which images go when you are delivering images to a client or making an album or doing anything where you're deciding what is good and what is bad in what you shot. I believe 100% that it is your job as a photographer to choose for your client which images they see and you are the expert. It is really important that you decide what they see because you are the expert. Anytime that you are unsure about what to show somebody and you just overshare, you just show way too many photos, you are diluting your work, you're showing indecision, and you have already been hired for your artistry as a photographer and for your vision. Part of that is trusting you to choose the right images to show your client really, really famous photographers, they have complete control over what they show the world, and that is why they are famous. Trust me. Everyone makes bad photos. The good photographers never show their bad photos, and that includes to your client. Also, the second part of this is that culling your work, deciding what you give your client, is part of your job, and it's a burden if you pass that on to your client. If you give them 50 photos of their face, you know, that are all slightly different because you're unsure which photo is the best photo, you've now passed that task on to your client, which is really an unhappy task for them. It's better just to decide that this is the best photo of you, or maybe give them one or two, and that's it. And then they see them and they go, you know what? I love your vision. I trust you. I love these photos. You tell them what's good, and they will believe it. Okay. Also, culling your work makes every photo that you deliver more valuable. Va ugh, valuable. You've already been hired based on your work, so don't dilute it with mediocre work and similars. What is a similar? So similar is kind of like inside baseball language. Um, it was. It's used a lot in stock photography. Which, and, and what, it, what it means essentially is a lot of similar photos. So say you, you're on like, um, you know, motor drive on your camera, like shooting a bunch of the same 
thing, like just slightly different, all of those are similars because they are similar to each other. So when I say similars through this whole thing, that's what I'm referring to. Um, similars in general are bad. You need to decide which one is the best, maybe one or two, and the rest pretend like they never existed. So that is my philosophy of culling ruthlessly. This will help you so much in your career, and you can take this philosophy all the way to your website and everything you do. You should only show your best work. We all know this, but it's really helpful to be reminded. Okay, so with that philosophy in mind, we're going to go over to why coal and photomechanic? What the heck is photomechanic? So ph photomechanic is a wonderful program that does one thing, in my, in my opinion, extremely well, and that is it lets you decide which images you want, which images you don't. And why it works so well is that photomechanic uses the embedded JPEG previews for every photo you take to show you what you have, rather than rendering the raw file. So I don't know, I don't know how many times you've like imported a bunch of stuff into Lightroom and then set like previews to one one size, meaning like full preview so that you can cull your wedding. But when I do that, I would like go make lunch because it would take so long for all those images to render. Like it's a joke. It's crazy. Like it's a joke. Just look online. Like everybody is complaining about it because it just takes forever because Lightroom is having to do some really heavy lifting and process every raw image separately and make a preview for it before you can even get to the point where you can just like click through them really quick and give them ratings. Photo Mechanic is different because it uses the embedded raw, uh, the embedded JPEG, the one that you see on the back of your screen right when you take your photo. That's not the raw photo you're seeing. That's the embedded JPEG and they're small files. So Photo Mechanic can just whip through that and you can just see everything immediately. The other thing that's really cool about Photo Mechanic is that it has really advanced sorting and keywording for your photos. And this is especially important for stock photographers and photojournalists. I don't know if many people watching this are stock photographers or photojournalists, but you ask a stock photographer or photojournalist about Photo Mechanic and they will tell you everything you ever wanted to know because they've been using it their entire career. Why? It's the absolute fastest way to put in metadata on your photos and get it copied around and sorted. It's very powerful for that. So it's really good for stock photography and photojournalists for that reason. All right, so here is how I call for clients. And I'm talking about wedding photography clients in particular. I go through my images only a few times, as few as possible. Every time you go through, you're wasting time. But here's how I do it. I do a first call where I'm trying to get rid of any images that are unsharp, where people are blinking, they have weird expressions, or any technical problems. So a really good example of this and why I don't do it very much is shooting photos of people eating. So you're at a wedding and the reception you know, is happening and people are starting to get dinner. That's usually when I take my big break for the entire day because no one looks good eating. Nobody. Y you always have an expression like this, like, or, or, or whatever. Those expressions are worthless. No one wants a photo like that. You're looking for those kind of bad expressions through the entire wedding. You want to get rid of those. You want to get rid of people blinking. No one wants that. You want to get rid of photos that are out of focus. It's not, in my opinion, it's not even worth saving a photo that's out of focus because in a wedding you've shot so many photos that at the end of the day, if you only take the best ones, you should have a few hundred photos and that is plenty for anybody. You just wanna show them your best work. Um, and then the last thing is if you have some photos that are like really underexposed or overexposed, get rid of those too, it's not worth it. However, with RAW, you can save you know nearly anything these days. All right, let's get back to it. You guys wanna see me calling, I know you do. So I'm going to whip through these, but these are important notes, so write them down. Um, the second part of culling, after you've gotten rid of all the garbage, you know, blinks, whatever, your gut, <laughs> and correct me if I'm wrong, I'm probably wrong about this, your gut has almost as many neural cells, I think, as your brain, something like that. Anyway, you actually do think with your gut to a certain point. It's where your instincts are. Your gut will tell you when you're culling an image whether something is good or not. If your brain starts going, 
hmm, mm, maybe my client would want this or that, or what if I leave this out or whatever, already it's not worth saving. It should be just a quick decision. It's either good or not. If you have to think about it twice, it doesn't make the cut. You will have enough images at the end. Trust me. It's more important to have it's more important to have fewer images that are all just completely kick ass than to have a bunch of images. And this and many people do this. Give people thousands of images where you've made no choices as to what to keep or not, and just dump that that whole pile of crap on your client's lap and giving them that work to do, don't do that. Be really ruthless in what you keep and what you get rid of so that when your client gets photos, even though it's not a thousand photos, they get like 300 photos or whatever, 50 photos, that each one of them is amazing and valuable and you're not stressing their brain out having to like cull for themselves and sort through the good and the bad. You're doing that for them, that's your job. Um, and then the last thing is, I talked about this earlier, is about similars. You want to have little to no similars. Choose the best image from similar images and delete the rest. So deleting is a little bit extreme, but let me talk about this for one second. This is really important. So like pull on your big ears. If you're wearing your small ears and you're not listening, pull on your big ears and really listen because this is really important. I'm going to save you a lot of heartache and problems. If a client comes to you and they go, do you have a photo of this or that or a slightly different one of this or that? And you say yes, you've just opened the worst Pandora's box ever because now they're only going to be thinking about the photos you didn't give them. And they're going to want all those photos, all five million of them. And then no matter how well you did on your first delivery, they're only going to be thinking about the photos they don't have. So, and I can say this because I'm in a safe space and I'm not really shooting that many weddings anymore because I'm running masks and labs. I would just tell them that all the other photos are deleted. So I do my initial call. I deliver images. And if they ask if there are other images, I say no. It's my practice that, you know, I deliver my best images to you. As you've seen what I've done in the past, I would show them previous galleries that they would be excited about. I'd be like, I'm doing exactly what I did for everybody else. I only give out my best work. Here it is. End of story. Because if you go, yeah, there's another image, is, uh, another image I'll get back to you, it'll be a never-ending S show of trying to find images for people forever. And then even when you give them everything you have, they still think you're holding back. So anyway. It's very controversial. I'm sure there's people out there going, oh, what's the harm of just giving them everything? The harm is, is you are diluting your image as a good photographer. You're giving them more work to sift through and you're diluting your good work with your mediocre and bad work. I don't know, fight me. <laughs> Actually, I would love a discussion about this. It would be really cool. So it, whatever your opinion is, please put it in the comments and we'll talk about it. All right, all right, all right, enough talking okay little okay quickly pull out the bad images unsharp blinking weird expressions two only select images that you know in your gut are good if you have to think twice it's not all right contrary to the song don't think twice it's all right opposite of that if you have to think twice it's certainly not all right you will have enough images and third don't give them similars that's just rude because ultimately, there are only good images and mediocre images. There's no right number of images to give your client. You should only give your client good images, and that is the right amount. Do you hear me? There's good images, and everything else is mediocre, and that's the kindest word I could use, because really, all your other images are trash. It's just there's good images, and then everything else was like an experiment that didn't go right. Totally cool. I might shoot thousands of images and still deliver 400. Awesome, because no one has to see the bad images. And you still have enough. That is the right amount to give your client. The right amount is only the good images, nothing else. All right. All right, second part. All right, this is a little bonus. Um, you can screenshot this if you want. 
whatever you want to do. I don't care. Um, <laughs> you can watch this again. Share it with your friends. This is the formula that I found got me published the most. Um, if you shoot a wedding and you want to get it published, you need roughly this ratio of images. You need about 15 to 30 detail shots because we live in a shallow, terrible world where little details on tables are more important than true love. But hey, you know what? I'm talking business person to business person here. This is what you need to get published. Ton of details. If you don't see details at the wedding, just make them up. I just would make stuff up. I would go to like venues near the venue and shoot details so that I got published. All right, that's a little pro tip. Uh, second, you need some couples portraits, but not all couples portraits. You need to vary it more because the publication wants to see a sense of the entire event. So four to 10 couple portraits is plenty. Three to five portraits of the bride alone. We all know the bride is the star. That, <laughs> that again is just, you know, that's as old as the earth itself. Um, you need a few formal photos. I love doing formals, but they're, they're really important. You need to expand the experience of the wedding beyond just the couple. That's kind of a rookie mistake. It's not only just about the couple. It's about the location, the other people there, the family. So get formals, get bridal party, get scene setters. These are like landscape views, views of where you are. The location itself is a detail that's equally important as everything else. And any amount of photojournalism shots Yes, people still care about real moments in photojournalism. I know it's crazy. I know it's crazy. In the world of reality TV, people still care about the truth. So go out there and do it. I love photojournalism. That's my background. So you can pack a bunch of photos like that in there. And maybe together we'll change the industry away from just detail shots. But that's my formula to get published in a magazine or blog or what have you. This is it. Do this. You're good to go. All right, so after all that, let's start pulling, shall we? Okay, so this is a wedding that I shot many, many moons ago, um, but it was one of my favorites. It took place at a summer camp in Maine. I shot it half on film, half on digital. So I'm gonna be showing you kind of a hybrid uh, culling effort, uh, but this is photo mechanic, here we are. It looks like the, uh, you know, the grid in Lightroom, essentially. The difference is these images here are all embedded JPEGs. So you're not seeing a raw image, you're just seeing kind of a real rough JPEG. You're not looking for like color or, or white balance or anything. You're just looking for like blurriness, underexposed, bad expressions, etc. but it's amazing. So watch this. So you double click on your first image, and then I have my photo mechanic set up to where you uh, are selecting like star ratings using one, two, three, four, five. What's cool about this is that it goes right into Lightroom. So when, you, when, when we get to the end and we pull all these into Lightroom, the star ratings are gonna transfer over. Um, and also what's cool is when you rate something, it just advances to the next photo like that. So. Real simple. So let, let me undo these real quick. Let me put these back to zero. So that's it. It's super cool. You'll see how fast I can go. Uh, the other thing I do is I do a rating system of one or two. One is a keeper, two is a not keeper. Does that make sense? I'll show you why it's cool later. So again, if you have any questions while I do this, let me know because um, I'm going to get into editing Zen mode here for a bit. So this is a no out of focus, no, slightly okay, we'll keep it. Uh, blown out, uh, no, wait a minute, no, definitely no, that was loud, let's take that one, let's take that one. You'll just see how many details I have. Underexposed, let's keep that one. Um, that one is unsharp, that one's, kind of underexposed, out of focus, that one's good. Uh, no, that one can be saved, no, no, yes, and so on and so forth. Endless exciting stuff. So you're gonna, s you're just gonna be hearing me like tapping as I go. 
it's just, I know it's the most exciting thing in the world. It's like watching paint dry, but you wouldn't believe um, what photographers love to do. So I've done speed edits where like, I'm just sitting here editing for hours and they're just, it's just like amazing. I get it, it's cool. In Norway, they've got like a knitting channel where you just watch people knit and it's super popular. Um, and I kind of love that. So anyway, here I go. I'm going through this. You know, there's a lot of like, you know, getting ready. Um, I am definitely, uh, what is it called? Lifting the kimono? What is the phrase? Parting the kimono? Yes. I'm showing you all of my work. And I, I want to just like smash your dreams that I'm like this amazing photographer. You get to see all of my bad stuff. Um, however, if you saw the entire finished wedding, you'd be like, oh my God, that's amazing. And then this was published in like Maine Magazine. And it was, it re actually really truly was. Um, yeah, not to like humble brag. I am bragging, but whatever. Okay, so I'm just going through here. Occasionally I'm going to like get two things that are similar. That's okay. I, I said not to have too many similars. So like, I'm not gonna select every single one of these. I'm just gonna select a few that I feel are good. All right, super fun stuff, right? Okay, I'm gonna skip ahead to well, let's get to just something a little more exciting here. I love this wedding. It was great. I was up until three in the morning listening to, um, oh, who's the singer? Whatever. They were really into soul, and we just had, like, this awesome soul party uh, on the lake for a long, long time. It was just fantastic. One of my favorite weddings of all time. D'Angelo. That's it. We were listening to D'Angelo. To like three in the morning, this huge group of people in this barn by a lake. It was just fantastic. D'Angelo fan for life after that. So good. All right. Yeah, we got the iron going. Hmm. Okay. And I want you to notice as I'm doing this that I'm not really like hemming and hawing about what I'm picking. I'm just kind of like doing a real just rough like let's just get through this and get on with our life kind of coal. Um, I'm erring on the side of maybe maybe too many photos. That's a nice one. Um, but I'm certainly not keeping all of them. I'm probably keeping like, you know, I can just tell by my tapping. I'm probably keeping about 30% of them. And you won't be able to see until I get through this. Oh, not the best light. The funny thing about a wedding is you can go through a wedding and just go like, you know, oh man, this is, this is gonna be tough. Like no one's in the right spot. Like I'm not sure like if this is gonna be a really good wedding or not, like in terms of like getting published because you know, Part of it is about survival, let's be frank, like you want your business to do well. But the thing is, and this is something you just have to have faith in, is that if you're trying your hardest all day, you will have enough good photos to A, get published, and B, well, how about this? A, make the client really happy, and B, get published. You will, I promise you, if you're just like really, really working hard. So I'm going to skip ahead again. I, I would go through all of these, but, you know, I don't, again, I don't want everyone to, like, die of old age by the time I'm done. Um, that's nice. Okay. No. Sure. No. Sure. That's nice. No. I like that one. Mm, okay. Actually, I'm going to go back for a second. I kind of like her touching her chin.
Okay. Oh, look, got the flowers. Cool, sweet. Everyone's just chilling. She's getting her herded. Gosh, what's it like to have hair? Um, groom's presents. Grab one of those. Um, so, <laughs> this guy's a sweetheart. He's actually super cool. Um, so, a lot of the people in this wedding are a part of an indie band in Maine. Uh, so there were a lot of really, really cool people. That's why you see guitars and everything else. Um, so yeah, Eric has a band. And so a lot of uh, people at this were from bands, which was cool. All right, everyone's showing up. Oh, that one's bad. People are getting ready. Oh, that's nice. Okay, nice little portrait. Um, yeah, I'll grab that one. Cool. Uh, totally. Well, shoot. Okay. I'm at a quandary here. This is pretty underexposed, but I can see, maybe you can't see at home. This is a really, really nice moment. So I'm going to, I'm going to just be a little extra nice for like a second and be like, okay, you live and I'm going to keep you because I may need you later, but I'm certainly not keeping everything. Um, oh, and by the way, this is the last time I'm going to see these photos. Like the ones that don't make out of, out of photo mechanic. They're dead to me. Now, I've already delivered all these photos to this, this couple a few years ago, so they're all good, so I don't mind saying what I'm saying. But if this was like something I just shot, after I went through this, I would consider deleting all the ones that um, don't make the cut. I know it sounds really crazy, but you just have to trust yourself because you're just saving yourself a lot of time and a lot of heartache later um, if for some reason you need to give up some more photos to the client. If, if you're, if you're just like, you know what, I've already decided I've given you my best and you believe it and you know, it's true. That's good. That's where you should be at because no one needs, no one needs this photo. For example, Sam is beautiful, but in this moment, this expression is not, is not flattering. There's no reason anyone should ever see this ever again. It's not even a true, it's not even close to a true representation of who she is. You are doing a service by getting rid of this forever. All right. All right. We have a question. I'm going to stop for a question here. Yes. Um, okay. So Casey asks, when you're calling, do you mark selects you think will be perfect for sneak peeks or publication? Great question. It's kind of an inside job, that question. Um, no, but it's a great question. Yes. So I really think it's important to give people sneak peeks uh, from their weddings so that it, it buys you a little time to edit everything else, which is good. However, if, if you use Mass and Labs, you're going to like get through your wedding edits really quick anyway. But say you're not using Mass and Labs and it's going to take you a few months to get all your stuff to people, which is just a, a damn shame. You should give them some really nice uh, previews. And what I recommend is giving them like four or five of your second best work, not your best work, right? Yeah, Casey's agreeing with me. Okay, here's a little side pro tip. Why do you not give them your best work? Your second best work. So you give them your second best. Why? It's called anchoring. People do this with pricing where you have a, a low package, a middle package, and a high package. Your middle package is your anchor. It establishes like what's good and bad. If you give them your best five photos, you can't wow them later with the whole collection. Does that make sense? So you give them like four or five of your second best photos so that when you deliver your very best photos along with all the other ones, they're just like blown away. It's the whole like under promise over deliver. So give them your second best photos. They're still gonna be stoked. They just got married, they're so excited. They're gonna be like, thank you for giving us these photos. They're gonna share them all over the place. You don't want them to be bad photos because they're gonna share them all over the place. You want them to be second best and then just knock them out of the park with the full delivery. So that's a great, great question. All right, 
back to Z edit. Um, I'm not, okay. I'm going to do just a few more of these and then we are going to move back on to um, real life. Uh, isn't the light, I just want to say, isn't this nice light? It's sandwich light. It's coming from these two windows and then there's a window behind me. She's like in a box of, of windows. I love this light. Super easy to edit in. Oh, blurry. It's too bad. That was a nice photo. Okay, blurry. Eh. No, 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 no. And here we are. I'm already back in my groove. It took me like a few seconds, but then you get, then your, your stomach brain is just going, I'm ready to roll. And you're getting through this thing fast. Culling, if you cull right, you're, you're just going to be able to get through your whole event super fast. You know what's you know what's worse than you know what's grosser than gross? You know that whole like joke thing? You know what's grosser than gross, even though gross is not the right word? Editing photos that you never deliver. That is the damn worst thing in the world. And that happens when you select or okay, this this happens when you edit every single photo before you even cull. I am guilty of that. I've done that. This avoids all of that terrible temptation. You're just getting rid of stuff, get rid of it. So that when you do have time to really edit, you're not gonna rush through it. You're gonna do a super, super good job because you're not gonna waste time editing photos that you don't wanna even deliver. Okay, all right, enough of those. Let's, uh, okay, let's get down to, let's get down to the uh, film so that you, you realize that I'm actually an okay photographer. I'm kind of breaking from um, how I would normally edit just so I can get to the film stuff. Some people ask about like, how do you edit, you know, how do you cull film? Well, what's nice about film is that you're already pre culling because you're shooting film. You're not shooting like a thousand billion frames all the time. Um, your keeper rate is like 80% with film. So you're already kind of like pre culling You're not even taking bad shots or you're trying not to. So when it comes time to cull, it's simple. I have two portraits of this bride to choose from in this setting. Um, I need to do a little color correction here. That's okay. Um, they're a little bit yellow, easy to correct, but that's not the point. The point is I'm keeping that one and I'm keeping that one and that one's nice and that one's nice and eh, not keep that one. That one's nice. That one's nice. That one's nice. That one's nice. Uh, that one I just scanned a little different, so I'm not keeping it. Nice portrait, uh, kind of awkward, so no, yes, no, uh, mm, no. See, I hesitated, so it's a no. Um, yes, yes, yes. I swear this guy is really nice, um, so yes. Totally, cover of Vogue right there, all right. Um, he was a little scared in that one, so no, even though he's not. Um, and that one's not as exciting, not as exciting. Yes, nice moment, out of focus, nice, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera. And here to width and so forth, to forever and ever, amen. We're just gonna Grab these, that was out of focus, that one's fine. That one's got a lot of sun flare, it's kind of cool though. She's smiling, yes, uh, no, um, sure. Ooh, ooh, I like this one better. Sometimes kissing is not as interesting as um, right before the kiss. Yeah, like that's a much cooler moment. And that one's, that's fantastic. Um, no, no. Yeah, sure. Oh, that one's nice. Yes, yes. Mm, yes. Yeah, that's nice too. Okay, okay, I'm grabbing a few similars. Don't shoot me. Um, no, she's blinking. Uh, yeah, that's fun. No. Love it. Uh, totally love it. Just a slightly different scan. Uh, detail shot. Uh, blinking, no. Looking off in the distance, a little out of focus. Uh, now he's in focus, yes. 
Uh, you sure? Uh, it's a pile of wood. It's a damn pile of wood. Uh, I'm, I'm looking for details all over the place, but I'm going to say, I'm going to say no to that one. Uh, yeah, the kayaks are cool. More kayaks. I don't need them. This one's underexposed. Totally easy to fix. Don't worry. Uh, even though it's film, I love the paddles. So yes, uh, Eric and Sam. Yes, we kind of have to have that one. Um, trophies from Oaka Camp. Uh, eh, kind of boring. So no. And this is way cooler. Some weird like Knights of the Round Table painting. Yes, absolutely yes. Uh, some old stove, sure. Um, painted animals. Yeah, these are good details. New England coffee. I love it. We're in New England. And there's Eric, super cool guy. Just nice portraits. Um, talking with his friends. Out of focus, so no. Yes. Some priest guy with a flag and some trophies. Absolutely yes. <laughs> Hanging out with the bros. Yes. Um, no. Nice. Yes. Yes. And you see how this goes. Okay. All right. So we got all of our, I, I, I would normally call all, I don't know how many images we have here. 1,688 images. Oh Lord. That's a lot of images. I, I must've been really excited that day. Um, but I would, I would normally just like keep going through these images and get them all, you know, prettied up, um, you know, all rated. And then what you do is you come back out to this view, to the grid, and now you can see only your best photos if you want, or you can see the ones you rejected. So all the ones that are zero, I'm gonna get rid of. Those are ones I haven't, I haven't given a score to, but normally I would score everything. And now you're left with either ones or twos. If I get rid of the twos, we've only got keepers. So all these are one star. These are all the ones I decided to keep. If I get rid of that and I just show twos, these are ones I've for sure discarded. So we don't care about those. We just want the ones. So now we have all of the ones. Now what you can do is you can just grab them. Whoops. Let me try that again. Grab all of them and just pull them right into Lightroom. Now, if I'm going from a folder on my desktop, which is what I would normally do before I'm like archive. If, so if I'm being, if I'm being, okay, while this is rendering, I'm going to tell you something. If I'm being truly ruthless, which I'm hundred percent in favor for, my steps would be import to a folder on the desktop, like on the desktop of your computer, put them in a photo mechanic, call everything until you have only the keepers drag them into Lightroom and move them at that point into a permanent folder on your hard drive that is backed up to a RAID system. And then that all that nice hot mess is backed up to something like Backblaze, which is a cloud-based uh, backup system, which I've been using for like 9,000 years. I use a, um, a Drobo, D-R-O-B-O. Uh, backup drive is a, I guess it stands for disk robot. That's where everything is imported to. Once I've made my selections in photo mechanic and I'm going into Lightroom, which I'll show you in just here in a second, this is still kind of, you know, sorting itself out. Um, once everything goes into Lightroom at that import, it goes on the Drobo in its own folder. The Drobo is constantly being backed up to Backblaze. 24 seven. That means I've got a copy that's on my raid, which is the Drobo. If you don't know what a raid is, just look it up. It's like a redundant drive system. You never want to lose photos. That's the worst thing in the world. I've got one on my raid and then that's backed up to the cloud constantly through Backblaze. Now I would also have a copy on my memory cards that would stay there until Backblaze is done backing up. That's my backup system. So um, there's a million out there. We can we can put in the comments or something attached to this broadcast, like my backup system, so you can just see. It's very simple though, but it's just Drobo, Backblaze, 
and then a third copy on the cards, and that should protect you. Okay, meanwhile, back at camp, um, I've imported, or I've drug all of, drug, dragged? Drug. Drug all my photos to uh, Lightroom that I wanted from uh, Photo Mechanic. They're right here. Um, only the ones that are selected in Photo Mechanic are selected here. And at this point, I would move them into a folder on my RAID. I am not on my personal computer. This is a different computer. Um, so I'm just gonna put them on the hard drive here. But normally what I do is I sort all of my weddings by year. So every year I have a new catalog in Lightroom or Capture One and I sort them by year. So I, the name of the couple, the venue, in a catalog sorted by year. If you're mo mostly a wedding photographer, it's really simple because everything should be just wedding related on that catalog. Um, and now when I go to import all of these, they are gonna be starred with ones. And at that point I edit them and then deliver them to my client either through um, some kind of online uh, you know, Dropbox system. Uh, I, I've used uh, Instaproofs. Um, there's all kinds of things. There's pick time. Uh, there's many, many ways that you can get your photos to your clients at that point. But the most important part is getting them cold before you are in Lightroom or Capture One. We have other videos that go into how to use Lightroom, how to use Capture One, and all the processes after that. But today is just about this first really important step of going from here to Lightroom. Okay, we have a question. Okay, so Lacey Bortner asks, uh, do you zoom to check focus? Sometimes I think I obsess about sharpness too much. Um, in Photo Mechanic, they are pretty zoomed in when you look at them initially. So I'm, I'm assuming that you mean like, like really zoom in. So like right here, I can see that this is in focus. If something is really, really dark, um, I, had a, I had a really nice moment that was really dark up here. Let me find it. Blah, blah, blah. Where are you? It was like a hugging situation. Oh, come on. Here it is. Okay, so now on a photo like this, I can't exactly see if it's totally sharp because it's so dark, right? Well, in that case, you can zoom in if you want. Even on the um, JPEG, uh, embedded JPEG, that's what Photo Mechanic looks at. And at this point, you can see. So yeah, you can zoom in. For the most part, though, I recommend that you don't um, zoom in and look at everything that closely. If for some reason you are flying through your photo mechanic culling and you accidentally pull something into Lightroom that isn't sharp, in Lightroom you can delete it. You can get rid of it there. But the point is, is that you are skipping the really super slow raw rendering problems of Lightroom uh, when, you're, when you're doing your initial star ratings and you're doing all that in photo mechanic and that saves you a ton of time. I can't even begin to express how much time it saves you. Like if I was to do this in Lightroom, 1,688 images, it would be like, hey everybody, it's Kirk Masson at Masson Labs. We're gonna cold today. I would import all my photos and then I would check back in in like two hours. I would just walk away and come back and be like, is it done yet? Um, and maybe it would be done. In Photo Mechanic, it's done immediately, instantly, which is why like every photojournalist in the world uses Photo Mechanic. Because they don't got time. They don't got time for that. They got to get their news out, so it goes really fast. Um, and I hope that is helpful. Do we have any more questions? Or should I should I reiterate what I talked about at the top of the the top of the hour? All right, everyone. So I hope that was helpful. If you want to just boil this down to its most basic part import your photos into Lightroom or into Photo Mechanic. Um, once you've done that, just use a, a, a one or a two star to sort the good and the bad. Every time you, you rate one, it just advances to the next. 
Once you've got only your best images, you drag that into Lightroom and you proceed from there. And that just this one part alone will save you hours of time. As far as the philosophy of what to keep and what to get rid of, I'm gonna go over that really quickly one more time. Get rid of blinkers, weird expressions, technical problems. Then only select images that you know in your gut are good. If you think twice, if you find yourself even for a moment going, eh, I don't know, eh, eh, no, it's a no. Unless If it's not an, an F yeah, it's a no. And then third, try to really cut down on similars. Just decide for your client which is the best image. Um, you know, it can be hard sometimes. Like, let me show you. So like, see these images, right? Oh, come on, scroll thing. Don't do that. Okay, see these images right here? These four? Oh, let me make them a little bigger. Oh, I am, I'm failing on the scrolling today. They're all, they're all nice. I mean, all four of these are nice, right? But one of them is best. Let that sink in. One of these is best. That is what you want to show your client. If you show them like, okay, and then best, the okay photo drags down the best photo to like, be a little better than okay. It's no longer like amazing, because it's lost in a sea of like, okay. That makes sense. So it's real easy when you take just a single photo of a bride and, and, and when you're taking it, you're like, that's exactly what I wanted. And I do this all the time with film. I shoot it and I'm like, I'm good. I'm moving on. That's exactly the feeling I wanted. Or like, uh, with Eric, like that's exactly the feeling I wanted. Sometimes I'll shoot, you know, a few in a row and it gets to be hard to decide which one is best, but one of them is best. In this case, I would, I would pick two. So we've got two that are not totally similar. We've got them, you know, we've, we've got Sam looking at the camera, Eric's looking at Sam. So one of these I want to keep. Her expression is a little bit sweeter in this photo than that photo. Just watch her mouth change. So I'm going to keep this one. I got to do a little color correction, no big deal. Um, so I'll keep that one. And then we've got these two, right? One of these is better. I'm gonna say that's better. That's what my gut says. Now, if I break it down, the reason I think this is better than this one, and it's a small thing, but it's what my gut told me is uh, her fingers right here. This weird little, it's not weird. It's just like in between a moment. Uh, her fingers look kind of tense to me and my attention is drawn to her fingers every single time. And this one, my eyes go right here. This little circle right where their faces touch. Whereas in this one, I'm just looking down at this kind of tense finger situation. And that's what I mean about similars. So your job as a photographer to decide what's best because it's going to make your client feel better and happier and know that they picked the right person because they're only getting kick-ass images. You're not just dumping a bunch of, you know, 25 photos of the same almost identical expression on their lap and going, you choose which is best. So just be sure that you do that yourself it will help your career tremendously in ways you can't even imagine by taking on that responsibility. All right, so I hope that you enjoyed today's show. It's a little bit on the technical side. I, I mean, I could have done this in 10 minutes just by basically saying use Photo Mechanic to do your first round of culling, but I wanted to get in detail because I want to help you out. Um, I am personally invested in your success and I love seeing people grow in the Mastin Labs community on Facebook. So again, if you're not already part of that community, please join us. We want to help you succeed. I'm in it to win it with you. I want no, I'm I'm in it for you to win it and that makes me win it because it makes me happy when you're happy. So join our group. It's amazing. If you don't use Mastin Labs yet, you can also join our group. Throw in uh, a few raw files uh, through through a Dropbox link in the community if you want to see what Mastin Labs uh, film emulations look like on your work. If you want to get that consistency, that beautiful color that never ages poorly, that's timeless, that looks like real film, it's based on real film. If you want to see how that looks on your work, come into the community, join us, 
drop a link with a raw file and I promise you, you'll have like 15 or more eager photographers willing to show you the way of how you can get work that you're going to love for years to come and that your clients are going to love. So join us on the Facebook community, Mass Labs community. If you're watching this on YouTube, you know the drill. Subscribe, hit that like button, hit the bell so you get updates. Um, our community and channel is growing super fast and we're putting out content every week. So be sure to subscribe. All right. Thank you, everybody. And join us again uh, for our next episode. It's going to be great. Happy editing.